Welcome! In this tutorial, we're going to build a prototype for a podcast app. In the onboarding flow, users select one or more topics of interest. The app then offers a collection of recommended podcasts that align with the user's selected preferences. Our podcast app is a high fidelity design and it's ready for user testing. We want our users to be able to interact with our prototype just like they'd be able to use the real app. So we need to plan for each path and decision in our prototype. In this tutorial, we'll use features such as variables, interactive components, and conditional logic. But why are we using advanced features for this design? After all, couldn't we just design a frame for each possible iteration of user selections? Of course we could. However, we're choosing to use variables and conditional logic in this case because it saves us valuable time. Instead of creating countless frames and prototype connections, we only need a few key frames. This helps us keep our canvas clean and requires less memory usage too. It also makes maintenance easier. Let's get started. To follow along with this tutorial, grab a copy of the playground file, linked in the video description. We've already created a few of the key elements we'll need for our app, including a get started page where users can select one or more topics that interest them, and a home page, which displays related podcast cards based on their selections. We also have a loading page and some initial prototyping connections set up. We have an interactive component set to represent our topic buttons. It has a false variant, representing the unselected state, and a true variant, representing the selected state. There are four instances of the false variant on our Get Started page. Each instance represents one of our available topics, music, food and drinks, product design, and news. How can we store information about the selected state of each of these topics so that we can display that information on our next frame? This is where variables come in. Boolean variables are variables that have a true or false value. Because our variants also have true and false values, we can assign a Boolean variable to each instance. Let's create Boolean variables for each of the topics. Deselect everything from the canvas and click on local variables from the right side panel. We'll create a Boolean variable called has music and set its default value to false. Let's create three more Boolean variables. We can do that by clicking on the create variable button or we can simply use the shortcut to duplicate the variable. We'll name the variables has food, has design, and has news, all with false values. Let's close the modal and assign the variables to our topic button instances. From the right side panel, click on the assign variable icon to assign the has music variable. Now, the variant value is associated with the value of the Boolean variable. Let's apply the remaining variables to the rest of the topics. Nice. If we look at our component set for our topic button, we already have some interactions set up. Every time you click the false variant of the button, it changes to the true variant. Since we have assigned the Boolean variable to the topic instance, it will change its associated Boolean variable from false to true as well. Think of it like a chain. The instance is linked to the Boolean variable. We can then link the Boolean variable to other elements in our design. This is a crucial step to help us change the properties of other objects in our design. Now, we can control the visibility of podcast topic cards on the home screen based on user selections. Let's stay on the Get Started screen to do a quick test to see how Boolean variables work with layer visibility. We'll create four squares with different colors and assign our Boolean variables to their visibility by right-clicking on the eye icon in the layer section of the right side panel. Now, let's test out the prototype with Inline Preview. We'll open Inline Preview using the shortcut Shift and Space. When we select the music topic, the square with the has music variable assigned appears on the frame. If we unselect it, the square disappears. Clicking on other topics will do the same. This is because when the attached Boolean variable is true, the layer is visible. And when it's false, the layer disappears. Now that we know the interaction works, let's go to the home screen design and apply the Boolean variables to the podcast cards. We'll select all the music-related cards by holding the Shift key. 
and right click on the eye icon to assign the has music variable to them. Let's do the same for the other cards. Open the inline preview again and test it out. Let's select the music and product design topics and click continue. As we can see, only music and product design related cards are populated on the home screen. Let's restart our prototype and this time we can select another topic. Looks like it works. Now, how are users going to get from the Get Started page to the home page? After they select one or more topics, they'll click the Continue button. The Continue button should only be enabled when we have one or more topics selected. This means we'll need some conditional logic and simple math. Let's break it down. Every time we click a topic, the number of selected topics will increase by one. If the number of selected topics is greater than zero, we will set the button from disabled to enabled. To achieve this, we will need two variables, a number variable to represent the number of selected topics and a string variable to represent the disabled or enabled state of the continue button. We can open our local variables modal from the side panel to create the new variables, or we can directly create them from the prototype interactions panel. To do that, let's switch to prototype view. We'll add a new action on the false button variant and set it to set variable. Then click on the plus icon next to the local variables to create a new number variable in the same variable collection. We'll name it topic selected and set its default value to zero. When the button is selected, we want to increase the topic selected value by one. So our prototype action will set the value of topic selected to topic selected plus one. Now, we need to think about our conditional. If the selected topic amount is greater than zero, we want to change our continue button from its disabled to enabled state. Let's take a quick look at how our continue button component is set up. It has a variant property called state with values for an enabled and disabled state. We can use a string variable in our conditional statement with the same values. Let's open up our variables modal again. This time, we'll create a new string variable called button state and give it a default value of disabled, since this matches the value of the continue button variant property. Now we can attach this string variable to the continue button instance on our get started frame. Select the button instance and click on the assign variable icon to assign the button state variable to it. Notice that the button has updated to its disabled state after we assigned the variable since the default value of our variable is disabled. Now that we have the variable set up, let's add it as a conditional statement on our topic button interaction. Click the connection and add another action and set it to conditional. The conditional is, if topic selected is greater than zero, then we want to set the button state variable to enabled. Let's test it out in inline preview. By default, the continue button is disabled and clicking on it will not navigate to the next frame. When we select a topic, the button changes to its enabled state and we're able to navigate to the next frame. Great, but we wanna make sure that the button will revert back to its disabled state when we unselect the topics. How can we do that? Just like before, we can do that by adding actions to the topic button component set but this time we'll add the actions in the reverse direction. Let's break down the interactions we need to add. Every time we unselect a topic, the number of selected topics will decrease by one. If the number of selected topics is less than one, we will set the button back to disabled. Let's add the actions to our interaction on the true variant of the topic button component. We'll add a new set variable action and decrease topic selected by one. Then we'll add a conditional action and set it to, if topic selected is less than one, set button state to disabled. Let's test it out again. When we select a topic, the button changes from disabled to enabled. And when we unselect a topic, the button reverts to the disabled state. Now, what if a user wants to skip this onboarding process? 
We want to add a skip option in the Get Started frame so that all cards will populate on the screen. We already created a skip button in the button component set here. Let's add the enabled variant to our design. We can add an interaction on the skip button component so that when a user clicks it, they will navigate to the loading frame. The loading frame has its own interaction to automatically navigate to the home page after a delay. Then, we'll add more actions to the skip button component to set the has music, has food, has design, and has news variables to true. Let's check out the prototype again. When we click on the skip button, all of the cards show up on the home screen frame. We're all set. Our podcast app prototype is complete and it's ready for user testing. Leave us a comment to let us know how you're using variables and conditionals in your prototypes. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more Figma tutorials.